Good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Bogan's European Outlook. This is the latest Arpege total accumulated precipitation between now and the 1st of July. And you can see here that we have got um, the wettest conditions across the, the west and northwest of the British Isles here. Plenty of moisture still feeding through the heart of Europe, if you notice here. But uh, we do have a, quite a lack of rainfall now starting to show up especially the further south and east you go over the British Isles here. I have seen a few comments saying that the grass in and around the London area is now starting to turn a little bit crisp looking. And uh, if you notice here, this is the latest uh, soil moisture content here. Um, so this is the soil moisture anomaly, should I say, as of the 20th of June. And you can see here that we do have some brown areas now starting to show up here. Western portions of Scotland down across say parts of Lincolnshire into East Anglia we do have still um, plenty of moisture in the ground here across the heart of the UK generally speaking away from these dry areas both in the northwest and the southeast Ireland and Northern Ireland looking not too bad as well notice here that down across Spain and Portugal we're actually starting to see a little bit of a recovery in the, the very drought stricken east but the you know if you look at another chart it's not looking particularly great either. But you can see here the low countries seeing some fairly wet ground. And generally speaking across the majority of mainland Europe, it's actually not looking too bad as we step into meteorological summer month number two. This is the uh, situation with regards to the Europe drought monitor. This is actually from Copernicus and this is as of the end of May. And you can see here that we have a couple of areas that may be a little bit of concern here. The, the, the wee red spots here in parts of Scotland is actually shown an alert in even parts of Ireland. It's very, very difficult to see. I, I appreciate that. You can't really see it very clearly. But notice generally that we still are not in, in great shape despite the soil moisture content being slightly above average in the east coast of Spain. We're still looking at alert with regards to drought situation here. Much of Western Iberia not looking too bad here with a few dry spots. France is looking pretty good and also across central areas of Europe. Now, the main areas of concern is actually across eastern portions of Europe here. And remember what I showed you with regards to the, uh, the pattern. This is a very, very rough sketch of, uh, of where I think it's possible that the mean ridges set up between Pacific, North America, North Atlantic and Europe here that we may have a bit of a negative here over the west of Europe here with a ridge over that warm waters within the central North Atlantic here. I think with the negative PDO signal we tend to focus the high pressure heat and drought across the plain states of the United States as well here and then another ridge here over the warm waters of the North Pacific and generally the jet stream would have this kind of orientation in my mind anyway but we'll wait and see what happens but certainly looking at moisture levels we are likely to continue to see a drying out process as we step out of June and into the month of July and like I say we've still got plenty of moisture a lot of severe weather flooding in localized areas across the the heart of europe as well that is something that is ongoing so this is the um the latest situation with regards to the satellite image we've got a, a rather unseasonably deep area of low pressure spinning just to the west of scotland here this is bringing in fresher conditions across uh, particularly england where we've seen temperatures back to back days of 30 celsius just over 30 celsius to be exact uh, we're seeing fresh conditions across Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland and northern areas of the British Isles and even down across this area that has been in the mid to high 20s over recent days. We're seeing the temperatures come back down to the mid 20s. There's a blow up of thunderstorms here, as you can see, across parts of eastern France through Germany, the Alpine region, down into the Balkan region, eastern areas of Europe, uh, Poland, for example, western Romania uh, is seeing some fairly lively uh, thunderstorms. You notice here this little spin just to the southwest of Iberia here, west of Morocco. That is also bringing some fresher conditions into the Atlantic coast of Morocco, the Canary Islands, etc. etc. Looking closer at the UK, you can see here that we have got um, uh, the winds coming around that circulation here. The, some of these uh, winds are bouncing over the mountains of uh, 
England the Wales, you can see this kind of ripple effect in the clouds. That is basically the winds bouncing over the topography. Um, so it always creates a, a very interesting spectacle on uh, satellite imagery. So this is the, uh, late, the highest temperatures yesterday afternoon. We did have uh, the highest uh, temperature of the year so far. I can't remember the exact location, but it was just over 30 Celsius, around 30, uh, 30 and a half degrees Celsius. We've seen uh, Surtsey in, uh, in Surrey recording the first 30, exactly 30 Celsius to, um, was achieved uh, the day before. So this was uh, obviously two days in a row of 30 Celsius in the UK for the first time this year so far. These are the current temperatures. And you notice here that we've got the, still relatively uh, average conditions, probably the best way to describe across, uh, particularly Northern Scotland, a little bit fresher across the uh, parts of the Highlands into the central belt as well and notice here across say uh, ireland and northern ireland temperatures yesterday were as high as high as 26 celsius in dublin we're only in the low to mid teens this afternoon thanks to that wind coming in off the atlantic and cloud cover and in then even wales and southwestern england northern england seeing temperatures stuck in the mid teens then as you get the to the east midlands south midlands and then into east anglia we're still holding on to some warmth Looking at the temperatures across the continent at this hour, and it is a very warm picture. We see here temperatures as high as 50 Celsius in central portions of Algeria. So we've got some very, very intense heat across the Sahara Desert at this moment in time. Now, what is quite interesting is uh, if we look at the overview picture here, this area of low pressure spins away. Uh, I think pressure is into the, the, the mid-980s in millibars, so that's quite a deep area of low pressure. That then eventually starts to push its way in with the heavy blustery charge, longer spells of rain here. Then we're keeping an eye on this little feature. This is off the R-Page model today, by the way. I thought we'd look at that instead for a wee change. There's that spinning uh, area of low pressure to the southwest of Iberia, moving in over the Iberian Peninsula as we progress through the course of tomorrow. We'll skip back here, you can see that feature uh, moving into Spain, bringing charge and the uh, longer spells of rain here. So you can see all the convection here extended from Spain all the way right up through the Alpine region into the eastern side of the continent here. And then we've generally got this positive NAO signal here, low pressure to the north, higher pressure to the south. And we've got a general uh, westerly flat flow coming in which will keep temperatures um, at least average if not slightly below average and then as we continue to play through the course of the weekend not a huge amount going on we've got a system exit into the east here then we're kind of left in a bit of a no man's land but nothing overly hot to speak about thanks to that westerly flow coming in the you can see here a frontal system moving in during the early portions of next week here. Let's have a look and see actually what the GFS is showing for the same period here. So back to the here now, 984 millibars seen by the model here, moving in over the northern half of the British Isles, bringing in that fresher air as well. There's that area of low pressure moving in across Siberia. And then as we play through the course of the weekend here, we've got a little bit of a northwesterly component uh, let's have a look and see what the 850 temperatures are showing for the same period. So we've got relatively fresh conditions at 5,000 feet above our heads at this time with a, a slight northwesterly flow. Lack of wind across the bulk of England, Wales and Ireland here, if you notice here. But we're generally in that kind of no man's land as we step out of the month of June and into the month of July. And then as we play through the course of uh, the 1st of June, July into the 2nd of July, it's generally a westerly airflow uh, across the, the UK here. And then if you notice, as was highlighted in recent days here, that area of high pressure trying to build a little bit further north, given the circumstances over North America, with a, a systems riding over the top of that high over the central plain states, dropping into the eastern half of the United States, that then it'll, it changes the dynamic over the Atlantic here and starts to see more in the way of troughiness. Now, this is obviously one uh, deterministic uh, operational, should I say, run of the GFS here. So obviously you can't take this as literal, but the general emphasis being on higher pressure to the south, lower pressure to the north, and it looks as, like, as if lower pressure is going to win out 
the first week of the month here. And then what I expect to see happening is higher pressure building north over the Atlantic. And we are kind of go back to the early June setup where we actually have below average temperatures and somewhat more unsettled. If we look at the um, if we look at the latest run of the ECMWF weeklies here, so this is week one. So this is the the first of July through the eighth of July, and you notice here that we've got below average temperatures across Western Europe. The majority of Europe actually, you know, generally from uh, West Poland all the way to the UK, Ireland, down across Spain and Portugal as well. We've got generally blues representing below average temperatures here, which is quite interesting. Week two isn't much better. So this has appeared all the way out to the 15th of July. And we're noticing here that we're not really seeing the oranges uh, representing above average temperatures across the UK and Ireland. So this is off the ECMWF weeklies, by the way. And then even in the week three, this is the 15th through the 22nd of July. And it's not indicating much of a heat wave. So uh, this is something that we will need to keep an eye on as we go forward here because this certainly is very very interesting and it would kind of go along with this idea of higher pressure over the atlantic and a, a west to north westerly airflow coming in off the atlantic here now we still can have higher pressure we can still have a dry theme overall but temperature wise i don't think this is a particularly hot looking pattern as we go into the month of July here. So we're certainly going to have to keep our eyes on this going forward here. And then I think there was a couple of one or two aspects I wanted to try and show you here. Uh, this was, by the way, this was the scene going down the A9 yesterday at Dramokter. It actually felt like a winter's evening. It was dark. It, it was all closed in. Temperature was 13 or 14, so it wasn't particularly cold. But it was strange seeing windy, foggy, gloomy conditions. Um, as I was driving down the A9 last night here. So now I don't think I've got anything else to show. By the way, it's um, our good friend Mark Kinnish's birthday tomorrow. I'm going to say this now in case I forget to say it tomorrow. So a very happy birthday to Mark. Uh, he turns, I'm not going to say how, how old he's going to be tomorrow. I'm sure he wouldn't mind, but I'm, not, I'm going to keep that one quiet. But uh, it's his birthday tomorrow, and I would like to wish him a happy birthday and i'm sure everybody here on the channel would like to wish mark a very happy birthday tomorrow when it comes and if i can remember i'll give you a second birthday wish tomorrow so anyway that's it for today i do hope you can subscribe to the channel if you enjoy today's content if you enjoy the channel overall and the content that i'm providing here uh, it would be greatly appreciated remember that we ha will have the tropical outlook on saturday and also the live stream is back at 4 p.m this Sunday afternoon. So I hope you can join me for that as well. But plenty more coming up tomorrow and the final day of the European Outlook for the work week. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.